like this weird competition of cool. You take a reef shot to the side of the head for a wave like that. If I can win this, this will be the greatest moment of my life. All the girls are surfing so well. They're beautiful inside and out. Going skagless is a whole other realm, like a fast version of body surfing. There's something about just getting in the ocean and cleansing ourselves from everything else that's going on in the world. My job description is student, student of surfing. Board Stories TV is proudly presented by Cholos and OC16, exclusively on Oceanic Time Warner Cable. Aloha, I'm Mahina Garcia and welcome to Board Stories. Get ready for some cool stories and great action. This time we highlight the WSL Dukes Waikiki Longboard Pro, where the big boards took over the lineup at Queen. We also check out North Shore pro Daniel Jones and his recent endeavors working with shaper Maddie Rayner, as well as Kimmy Werner and her sustainable living choices. And fresh off his big retirement announcement, one of our favorites, Fred Patachia, sits down to talk about his big decision. All right, we've got some good stuff coming up, but of course we're going to start off right. You know what I'm talking about. It's the Tube of the Week. In the middle of one of the most active hurricane seasons Hawaii has seen in some time, Hurricane Ignacio lined up a good dose of swell for the eastern shores of the Hawaiian Islands. While the chase for waves was on, top Hawaii junior surfer Seth Muniz had a spot in mind that he knew would take in the swell. On his third session of the day, dropping in deep behind the curtain, Seth weaved through numerous sections to break out the other end reaping the rewards of a nice byproduct of hurricane storms. Up next, the longboarders mix it up at the Duke's Longboard Pro in Waikiki. Keep it here on Board Stories. Burrito. Taco salad. Black bean nachos. Yum. Fresh fish tacos. Mojito. Margarita! Homestyle Mexican food and the best grinds in the islands. Cholos at the North Shore Marketplace. Live the dream! Welcome back to Board Stories. In the heart of Waikiki for the WSL Dukes Kane and Wahine Longboard Pro. This WSL sanctioned event was held as part of the annual Dukes Ocean Fest celebrations in honor of Duke Kahanamoku. With the chance of earning qualifying spots into the WSL Longboarding Championships in China, the field was stacked with talent and the waves showed up. The waves were just more than you could hope for for Queen. Sometimes we come down here and aren't so lucky, but it was, you know, perfect two to three feet, light winds. Every time I was paddling back out, and you know, I see Nelson and Dwayne and Zach just, you know, all on good waves. The waves are actually super good. I think what was made it better was that, like, the girls were super nice and, like, it wasn't like a scrappy kind of thing. There was enough waves for everybody. In the women's final, Eva Beach local Stacia Ahina finessed the inside section of Queens, nabbing the better sets and longer rides that propelled her to first place, earning her entry into the championships in China. 
I don't know, it hasn't really sunk in. I guess it feels good because I get to go to China and try and win the World Championship. I'm super excited to actually go and just experience the whole like, just girls who want to surf and want to win and it, it should be fun. On the men's side, two of the finalists had already earned their place in the championships from last year's showing. So the two remaining finalists, Maui Zach Myers and Nelson Ahina, were granted automatic entry to the China event. I actually found out I was going to China in the semis, but uh, it's good to be in the final this year. I'm glad to be uh, going with four of them to China. It's going to be nice. Taking out the Kane division was Waikiki local Kai Salas, with an impressive blend of traditional and progressive longboarding, showing his obvious mastery of Queen's break. For me to do good here in Waikiki, I was born and raised here. My dad was a beach boy. You know, I have a surf school here in Waikiki, and I, this is my home break where I learned how to surf, and I surf here a lot. So anytime I surf out here, I kind of feel like I got to do good. I got to defend my spot. This is my home break. So. To come over that and win is a big accomplishment for me, and I'm super happy. Up next, Kimmy Werner takes a deep look at the resources around her and how to use them responsibly. Stay tuned to Board Stories. Teddy's Bigger Burgers Holly Eva, the standard in burgers as always, with amazing ambiance and Hawaii's premier tiki bar, great happy hour food and drinks, as well as smooth entertainment for all. Breakfast served daily right here at Teddy's. Come try our scratch made corned beef hash, rustic bacon, western loco moco, acai bowls, and caramel mac nut pancakes. We're spreading the aloha in Holly Eva. This is the all new Teddy's Tiki Bar and Grill, where bigger is always better. resources that surround us here in Hawaii, there's a lot that we can do to be more conscious and responsible with our daily routines. Free diver and sustainability advocate Kimmy Warner shows us what she's doing in this short documentary. The Daily Grind. We all go through it. The choices we make and food we eat are all a part of it. Can changing these choices change the world? For me, it's changed my life. It's not easy these days to know where your food comes from, and I think that's messed up. Here in Hawaii, over 90% of our food is imported, and we really have no idea what it took to get it to our plates. That's why I strive to take a deeper look at the resources around me and how to use them responsibly. And what better place to start than my own backyard. It's definitely a flat day here on the North Shore. When winter season is here, this whole coastline looks completely different. But since today's a flat day, it's a whole different scene and that makes me very excited.
Becoming an athlete and an artist did not come easy, and I'm still figuring out how to make it all work. My love for art came from my love for nature, and that's what keeps me inspired to paint. Cooking is another passion of mine, and this is where I feel I can make the biggest difference in living sustainably. It gives me such joy to work with fresh, natural ingredients. And when I've harvested them myself, it makes me determined to not waste a single part of it. He'e is the Hawaiian word for octopus, which I hunt by tickling them out of their hole. I don't spear them because I first want to see how big they are. And if they're a keeper, I bite right in between their eyes, which kills them immediately. It might seem gross, but believe me, they are delicious. And this he'e is going into a ceviche salad. I add fresh local veggies and green papayas, which have a ton of healthy enzymes and cook up to taste similar to a potato or squash. Simple choices like these have led me to meet others who share a passion for living this way. She invited us over and I've had her food plenty of other times, so it's really good. Mark Healy says that sustainability is the new punk rock. He's a professional big wave surfer who still takes the time to hunt for his own meals. Nourish the people that you care about and have a good time. To me, that is what life is all about. Hello. The more you focus on anything that you're passionate about, the more you're going to meet like-minded people. Oh, I like it. I met Kimmy years ago through mutual spearfishing buddies. She's way better than most of the guys I know in the world, and she always wants to cook the fish afterwards. Simple choices might often seem too small to make big differences, but I think that by being more conscious and by simply having conversations with one another, we can find solutions to the challenges that we face. Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Stay tuned to Board Stories as we drop in on Daniel Jones and Maddie Weiner teaming up to shape some interesting surfing craft. We're coming right back. Experience Hawaii's past in the present. Oahu's Waimea Valley calls you to reconnect. Waimea Valley is a rich and culturally significant vahipana or story place that embraces a world-class botanical garden. Come visit our newly restored kauhale and historical site believed to have been occupied by families of high rank centuries ago. Our kauhale at Waimea Valley is one of a kind, a special place to engage in Hawaiian culture. Reconnect at Oahu's Waimea Valley. Check out Surf and Sea now for a huge selection of Surf Tech surfboards, longboards, and SUPs, all at 50% off. Al Merrick, Rusty, and Simon Anderson shortboards, longboards by Robert August and McTavish, and SUPs all at 50% off. Hurry in and get 50% off a Surf Tech surfboard, longboard, and SUP while supplies last. Daniel Keone Kekaihola Jones. My dad moved to the North Shore and my mom moved to town. So kind of grew up in the beach breaks and then the reefs and then the North Shore. So kind of just fell in love with all types of waves. I met Maddie just through a mutual friend, just surfing and I think I saw one of his boards, the Nugget. It's this little 5-0 like round tail. And I was like, oh, I think looks pretty fun. I'll try one of those things. I missed the call, listened to the voicemail and I was just like, Oh my god, Dad's calling me for a board. He wanted to get a, I think it was a nugget. I just got a hold of him and he was really excited to work with me and so it just became a pretty good working relationship and I live on the east side now and that's where he lives so we end up just surfing together all the time. I think Dan's always been a tinker. I don't know if he's told you but even when he was a little kid he would take little pieces of foam. He would shape his own little surfboard so he could finger surf them. 
I first started when I was 12 with my dad, like after seeing Tom Curran ride that fireball fish, and I just wanted to fish, and no one was making them, so my dad and I shaped one out of a broken board. Ever since then, I've been really interested in it and kind of just looked up to all the shapers and just always tried to work with as many of them as I could. And yeah, Maddie was making me a few boards. We were doing some trade-ins and I was kind of giving him feedback and, and he would always say like, oh wow, you should just shape your own boards. I'm like, what? Nah, I mean, I mess around, but whatever. There's nobody I've ever met who can feel things and articulate that. Surfing and shaping has its own vernacular and it takes a long time to develop that, but nobody I've ever met is as articulate as Daniel as far as feeling, translating what he's feeling into a design aspect. But the, the actual shapes, they're getting incredible. I mean, for how long he's been doing it, and he is really methodical. Like, if you know him, he's incredibly analytical and uh, almost cynical sometimes. Like, he'll stare at something and then go for a walk and come back and stare at it. He's like a thinker. Everything has a reason behind it. There's function behind everything he does in the shaping room. I've been shaping some of my own boards the last two years. Uh, just mainly my friends and family, like my brother Mikala made him a few. My sister, she took one of my first ones I made. Flynn Novak, I surfed him a lot, so made him a few. And just other people who I've grown up with. I know how they surf and I surf with them a bunch, so I could kind of like try to correct things. They say like you gotta hand shape like a thousand boards before you're even a shaper, so I mean I'm just a whittler, just having fun trying to learn. I think as long as you're having fun and just creating new feelings for yourself, Somebody asked about Dan and what it was like having Dan red boards and I was just thinking like, I think I told him like, if Dan ever decides to be a shaper and you know, gets the craft down, he might be the best shaper of all time. Because there are very few people who are gonna be able to test their equipment to, to that level. Board Stories is sitting down with recently retired world tour surfer, Freddie Patashia. Keep it right here. Promotional support for Board Stories is provided by Waimea Valley, where Hawaii comes alive. Check them out online at waimeavalley.net and give them a visit next time you're on the North Shore. Welcome back to Board Stories. One of Hawaii's top professional surfers, Fred Patashia, recently decided to retire from the World Tour. After 10 years of competition, Fred explains to us why now is the time for him to step down. To sum up my entire career as a surfer would be tough. I think, I guess just say it was a joy ride. You know, I had a fantastic time doing it. I loved what I did. I surfed every event and every session with, with love and passion. And, and I had a blast, you know? I uh, walked the line of being focused, but not too focused. And I got to really enjoy the places and I really got to enjoy the cultures. And I feel like I really got to experience the world. It just seems like surfing was just a byproduct of everything else I got to do. Cause I would be surfing anyway, you know? All I had to do was put on a jersey and we called it competitive surfing, but I was doing it anyway. 
highlights of the CET was making the CET. When I first made it, Mark Akalupa was still on tour, Sonny Garcia, Kalani Rob, Shane Dorian, Andy was fresh on tour, Bruce was fresh on tour. All those guys I looked up to so much. And just becoming not only a peer, but a friend. I'm a full surf groupie, as well as a surf professional, so I guess I win both ways. The downfalls of the CT would definitely have to be trying your best and trying so hard and then maybe mother nature doesn't give you the wave or, or you get a bad call from the, the judges. You see after doing it over time that it's stressful and it hurts, it tears at every part of you because you want to do so well for the people counting on you, for your friends at home watching, for the fans that have supported you since day one. There's a lot of pressure to perform. And that second that you don't perform, you could be gone. You're, you could get clipped from your sponsors, you can fall off the WCT tour, and your paycheck can get cut drastically. It kind of was just eating away at me whether I wanted to keep doing what I was doing, you know? It's stressful. And I'm one of those guys that I go off feelings and I want to be happy. I fell out of love for competitive surfing in a way. I wasn't free surfing as much. I wasn't going to the gym as much because I just thought, why? Do I really have to prolong my career another two or three years before maybe I'm pushed out by the younger generation? Like, wh when do I make this choice? And in Tahiti is really where I made the choice. I, I told the guys at WSL, guys, I only want to surf my first heat at lowers. And that was really it, you know? I, I put my foot in the ground and I just told myself that that was gonna be my last heat. And uh, mentally and emotionally, it's a lot. You know, people don't realize that. You know, I, I paddled out to that heat and that night I couldn't really sleep. There was a hundred ways I thought it was gonna end in my head. And getting a 10 and an 890, whatever the other wave I got, I think it was maybe the highest heat total of the event. It was the only perfect 10 at an event. I didn't ever think that it would end that way for me, especially knowing that that was my last week. It wasn't spontaneous at all. It was the universe giving me a high five and saying, hey, Freddie, you're out. We'll see you later, <laughs> you know? Have fun on this wave. And I did, so it's great. I intend to not put a jersey on for the rest of 2015 and then regather my thoughts and possibly do a few events come 2016. I intend to go to the events, you know, cheer on my friends that are in the event, bring my daughter, my wife, and my son down there and just enjoy those events. And I look forward to that, you know. Eventually I'm gonna have to get like a big boy job. Uh, and I don't mind it. I've been talking to Quicksilver about that already and they're finding a position for me. But I'd also like to work with um, different foundations within our community where I can help. I wanna do things that don't necessarily make me money, but make me happy. And I also just wanna travel, sir. I wanna go and chase a swell. I haven't gotten to do that in so long. You know, the, the tour just keeps me so busy and, and every time that there's a break within the tour, I'm doing things with my family. So I wanna go chase some swell with my family now, you know? Just do that for a little bit. I don't wanna completely stop being a pro surfer. I wanna be a different kind of pro surfer, a different kind of person. Well, it's been another great show, but we can't close out just yet. As always, we leave you with our Spill of the Week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Mahina Garcia. Until next time, aloha. For this spill of the week, Waimea Bay takes center stage as two unlucky souls take a collision course for disaster. With Aussie surfing legend Tom Carroll in the front to watch, the unknown surfer in the middle just can't seem to find his balance on the drop and takes out his fellow surfer on the inside. I'll bet Tommy's stoked he avoided that mess. <laughs>